Hi everyone, I'm Devanshi and this is my co-host Paras. Today we have with us a very special guest, Dr. Ananya Das Gupta. Dr. Das Gupta is the director of the Center for Writing and Pedagogy and is also an associate professor of literature at the Kriya University. She has been she has been playing an instrumental role in uh, establishing various writing centers across many universities in the country since 2012 i believe yes <laughs> and uh, she also has uh, extensive uh, experience in developing and writing pedagogy uh, particularly in the field of academic writing yes yes and we are honored to have you here thank you so much very nice to meet you devanshi very nice to meet yeah you. so i'll start off with the questions dr das gupta yes so um writing centers are becoming more prevalent in mm-hmm. academic institutions and you've been a pioneer in establishing them as well so how do you think that's impacted the students it's a good question uh, you know so i mean you don't really know if something is working or not till you see its effects and so the impact on the students so the thing that i like to say at my center and it's become a kind of a joke is that um, you know the proof of the pudding is in its eating so if you are establishing writing centers and offering writing courses and running tutoring programs or doing whatever else that we do it has to finally show up in the student writing yeah. not just in the course that we offer at the center but also in other courses are they being able to take what they have learned to other courses also and it's been my understanding that both at the institutions that i have taught uh, and continue to teach and in other universities also where they've been able to have a writing center with focused attention on writing students as well as faculty notice that there's a marked uh, improvement in how students are writing so i think uh, Does that answer your question? Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah. I mean, it helps a lot in one-on-one tutoring. It gives yeah. you access to so much resources. So much, yeah, so, yeah, so yeah, much definitely. support and care. Yeah, yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Yeah, to me that's great to hear because uh, it's amazing to see how writing centers offer so much more than just academic assistance as well. Mm-hmm. So, what do you think are the untapped possibilities? When it comes to writing centers, and how do you think they evolve beyond their current role um at the moment uh, i would say that even getting writing centers going you had asked uh, you had said initially that you know that there are more and more now but even if there are more and more writing centers we can still count them on our hands you know 10 or 15 maybe at the most mostly in private universities in some institutes Uh, and more are coming up you're right but still given how bigger countries and how many colleges and universities there are there aren't there's simply not enough so even the teaching or writing courses or tutoring is happening at a very slow slow pace but even if that gets done it's a lot but your question is about what else could be done and how can they do a lot more than what they're doing so i would say and this we are beginning to see in some of the more established writing centers that have been around for 5 years and more at least there of course they are teaching the writing courses and they are doing tutoring and all all of the things that you said for us but they're also beginning to do all kinds of other workshops not just for the students in the college but also outside so kriya university center for writing and pedagogy for example we do a number of workshops at other universities colleges institutions invite us and they may not have their own writing centers so initiating that and helping other universities set up their writing centers uh, as you know the, these conversations that i had with the faculty here and now that the launch of the writing center is happening i have similar conversations with other institutions also so uh, what more they can do uh, would include things like training teachers training tutors and that's not very easily available everywhere so the training is an additional thing opening out workshops to people not just in other colleges but sometimes outside academia as well to give a sense that these are teachable things because quite often i'm asked you know can writing be taught yeah. and i have to say don't ask such basic questions i'll lose my job <laughs> um, but yeah so those are some things uh, creative writing academic writing all different kinds of writing working on the pedagogy of that these are some natural areas in which i think 
something it can expand you no know, so speaking of writing pedagogy um it's it's r- rapidly increasing globally right mm. um how do you think it's going to impact india or increase in india uh you're right globally also um it's in the us for example where it's uh, very very established and i got trained there i was a graduate student um, in the us and where i did my phd that university rutgers university also has a very large and a very very good writing center and as a ta i taught there so where when and where i learned to do this was actually there so it's very common place in the us to uh, see writing centers and what and the shape of that how it's structured how many people take it what they teach all of that may be a little bit different but it's very common for every university you know uh, college institute of higher education to have a kind of writing program now that's not the case in india right so what has largely happened now is that several of us and i'm not alone in this several of us who studied in the us because it's part of the norm there in many universities where graduate students who come to do a phd and our tas are sometimes uh, asked to teach in the writing center uh, to fulfill their ta duties and so several of us were done this that came here and either out of interest for me it was interest or for expediency several of us with a similar background are now teaching writing in india and what i found is that it doesn't translate exactly that even as you do it you shape it for what the indian classroom is for um, you know very different challenges in reading writing than i had encountered uh, when i was teaching in the us uh, so what is happening is that it's getting adapted it it's becoming something that is very specific to the classrooms that we all teach in and it's catching on um, the other very interesting thing that has happened is over the last few years and certainly last year i've been encouraging a uh, faculty that i train uh, in uh, who are teaching academic writing in english but are also very fluent and do academic work in another language so i have one colleague who works in english and in marathi one colleague who works in bengali and in english uh, one colleague several actually two and now one more person i uh, that who's working with me and i'm hoping he'll get trained to do it they are very good with hindi and they work academically and publish in hindi as well so these are nascent fields in some ways and last year uh, especially at kriya we um, so this one faculty member who does um, work both in hindi and english i got together some of my other colleagues who also work uh, in hindi and so what we teach in english so, so this is actually very interesting because people think this has got some to do something with the language actually it's not and i've been saying that for a while but till you do it it does doesn't become clear so what we do in a in a writing pedagogic classroom what we teach we said well this can be done in another language as well and we uh, did this very interesting workshop where the academic writing workshop was in hindi so everything that we do in english it was done similarly with hindi texts uh, um, and all of that and it was really really well received in fact several of these people are now doing workshops in other languages bringing that there so this is something that's been extremely exciting and a way in which academic writing pedagogy is growing that that really makes me very very happy right that's really insightful actually now you're also a poet and of course you're an academic how do you navigate between the intersection when it comes to these two kinds of writings and uh, also how do you think or what advice would you give to our students to when it comes to integrating creativity within academic writing thank you for that question um so one of the assumptions uh, that i often encounter that most people seem to have is that left brain right brain distinction some people are more creative others are more academic etc 
and uh, and many people say it whether they are folks in creative fields or whether it's um, colleagues and friends of mine who are academics will sometimes say, oh i am not creative i can only do um, uh, you know research writing others will say oh research writing and all are just so um, dry and boring and you know i only do and it's uh, do creative writing so there is this split and students also come into class saying that oh creative writing is so much better than academic writing and why because you know you know there are no rules in creative writing and i tell them no <laughs> there are plenty rules in creative writing and um, it's just that so i tell them for example if you want to learn to write a sonnet you know there are so many rules you have to learn uh, if you want to uh, learn to write that so yeah of course there are rules but there are rules in all all kinds of genres of writing so my approach both as a poet and an academic writer has been that i actually really enjoy language i love to read it i love to write it and that that play between uh language how you write it how you speak it how you hear it how you read it uh, really really inspires me and i don't think in terms of one is creative one is not right so i as a poet but it does teach me so poetry when i read and when i write poetry it teaches me certain things that i feel really affects my academic writing now what do i mean by that um poetry really makes you pay attention to the precision of the language that you're using the words that you're picking the way that you're forming sentences the way that you need to form a sentence say for example to convey an image very sharply right so it really makes you pay attention to words where you place them in a way now when i write prose when i write academic prose also i seem to be way more attentive to sentence formation language choice of words um and i feel I I feel that practicing writing poetry actually helps me with my academic prose and academic prose which is supposed to make you think critically or which is make which is supposed to give you the opportunity to explore ideas actually poetry can also do that you know poetry is also a space for that so i find uh, i don't feel like making these distinctions in the sense that oh if you're a poet uh, then you're not an academic writer if you're an academic writer then you're not a it uh, i find that doing the two together is, has been really helpful to me and so that's how so i don't negotiate it so much as you know each inspires the other i need to be doing both in order to be doing, doing both so to just kind of add on to that you're also a photographer and an artist mm. um i just want to know how do these creative outlets um mm. impact you as you, and your work as a teacher and a writer mm. um i again with the work with images whether it's um photography or drawing um my i ask my so people ask me okay how does it intersect and all for me it's like i'm constantly trying to and i think not just me all of us are constantly trying to make sense of our lives of ourselves and of the world around us and what are the means that we have different people find different means to do that and my means have been these and when i am drawing or taking a photograph or when i am writing in a sentence an image or thinking through an idea in an essay it still means you know my faculties how they work uh, and all of this are actually always playing together so you know we love to talk about point of view in writing right and and there's a way in which being a photographer has really trained my point of view like you learn to see things um in a way that may be even slightly different from how everybody else is looking at it they may have their own thing going right so that point of view and people who have looked at my work often tell me that you know that you that your composition is very good or that your point of view is very interesting because i didn't notice that but when we look at that then it tells us something else about the space and i realized i that doing that it's a, it cultivates a habit of the mind doing that then also when you working with words when i am working with words i think it comes into play and what i am able to do with words that articulation quite often helps me as i am composing artwork 
And so you also asked me, well, how does it help my teaching? So I bring all of that to my classroom. Yeah. So thinking about, so I'm very comfortable working with images as an allergy. So I found, find that even students find it easier to sometimes work with images first and then moving to text. So say if I have to teach a summary or description, we may begin with an image. And it's much easier if I tell my students, okay, so what all are you seeing in this image? And they'll jot it down. And then of course we'll say, okay, now I have a paragraph and it's all text, what are you seeing here now? So, um, so that easing into, and I do find that most students find that an easier way to think about summary or description um, or any other kind of detail that I need to be teaching at that point to begin with instances of imagery and then moving to um, uh, words and text from there. That's great to hear. I think uh, coming to our last question, yes. uh, what advice would you give to our students who want to improve their writing skills, yeah. be it creative or academic? Read. Okay. <laughs> Read a lot. I know this is not a new piece of uh, information or advice, but I really can't emphasize enough how important it is to read. And read in a way that... Uh, helps you to write. So again, and you know, and I do creative writing workshops as well. Uh, so when I teach these writing workshops, whether they are academic writing or creative writing, uh, we always begin with reading. You know, whether it's a haiku we are reading or an acad paragraph from, from an academic uh, scholarly essay, I first read it with them, we, with the participants of the workshop or students. And what we do is, uh, we'll say again, I have not invented this, but it's a common enough thing that people who work closely with teaching writing will say, that you have to learn to read like a writer. <laughs> so when you're reading a haiku to just enjoy yourself and see what haiku is like, that reading is very different from, I am now reading, in hi reading a haiku in order to learn how to write it. And so learning how how to read like a writer is mostly what we do in our classes and workshops. So that specific way of noticing not just what, what an author is saying, but how they are saying it, right? And that becomes the um, specific emphasis for that kind of reading. So when I say my advice is read, it's also read to be a writer. So what are those writerly moves uh, that are being made to be able to read for that and not just the content of what it is that you're reading. I think that's an additional skill that um, uh, that one acquires when one is also writing in that genre. So if you want to write, read. Thank you so Thank much you for joining so us and answering yeah. all our questions and sharing your insights on writing, creativity, and pedagogy. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you so much. Thank you.